Hello, and welcome to the Z Standing Ready channel dedicated to all things related to astronomy. For example, we have examined the lives of Hans Lippershey, Galileo, Copernicus, and others. Consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Hit the bell icon if you would like to be notified of new videos that have been published. So join me in examining the wonders of the universe. Astronomy is the oldest of the natural sciences, dating back to the very beginnings of human civilization. One person of significance who added to our understanding of the cosmos is Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler was a German mathematician and astronomer who lived in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. He is known for his groundbreaking laws of planetary motion which revolutionized our understanding of the solar system. Kepler's work laid the foundation for modern astronomy, and his influence can still be felt in the field today. This video will explore Kepler's life, achievements, and impact on science and society. Johannes Kepler's youth was marked by several significant events that influenced his life and career. He was born on December 27, 1571, in Weldstadt, a small town in the Duche of Wittenberg, Germany. Kepler was also the son of Heinrich Kepler, a mercenary, who left the family when Johannes was just five years old. The exact reasons for his departure aren't entirely clear, but there are some indications that he may have left due to financial difficulties and disputes with his wife over money. Johannes' father, Heinrich Kepler, fought in various wars, and he often left his family for long periods of time. During his absences, Johannes' mother, Katerina, had to support the family by running an inn and managing a farm. Some historians speculate that Heinrich Kepler may have been involved in shady business deals and his financial troubles may have led to his departure. Others suggest that there were tensions between Heinrich and Katerina due to their different personalities and social backgrounds. Whatever the reason for Heinrich Kepler's departure, his absence had a profound impact on Johannes' life. Growing up without a father, Johannes developed a close bond with his mother and her family who encouraged his interest in astronomy and mathematics. This left his mother, Katerina Kepler, to raise him and his two younger siblings on her own. Despite the financial struggles they faced, Katerina was determined to provide her children with an education. Johannes attended a local school in Weldershot and showed an early interest in mathematics and astronomy. However, when he was six years old, he contracted smallpox, which left him weak and with poor eyesight for the rest of his life. Despite his visual impairment, Kepler continued to excel in his studies and showed a particular aptitude for mathematics. In 1587, at the age of 16, he enrolled at the University of Turbigen to study theology. However, his interest in astronomy continued to grow, and he became assistant to Michael Maislin, a prominent mathematician and astronomer. Under Maislin's guidance, Kepler learned the latest theories of Copernicus and Tycho Brahe, which laid the foundation for future work. Kepler's interest in astronomy continued to develop, and he began to conduct his astronomical observations using a telescope to study the movements of the planets. Kepler's youth was also marked by personal struggles. He converted to Calvinism, which caused problems with his Catholic employers in Graz, where he worked as a mathematical teacher. He also faced financial difficulties due to his strained relationships with his patrons. His early years were marked by perseverance, hard work, and a strong desire to learn, all of which helped shape his life and career. Kepler arrived at the University of Tübingen in 1587 at the age of 16. At the time, 
Tübingen was one of the most prestigious universities in Europe, known for its rigorous academic standards and its focus on humanism and the classics. Kepler was interested in pursuing a career in the church, and he hoped that his studies at Tübingen would help prepare him for this path. During his studies at Tübingen, Kepler studied under a number of prominent scholars, including the theologian Jacob Herebrand and the philosopher Michael Maislin. Maislin was particularly influential on Kepler, and he introduced him to the ideas of the great astronomers of the past, such as Copernicus and Ptolemy. Maislin also encouraged Kepler to pursue his interest in mathematics, which would eventually lead to his groundbreaking work in astronomy. Despite his academic success, Kepler faced numerous challenges during his time at Tübingen. He struggled with rigorous course load and often felt overwhelmed by the demands of his studies. He also faced financial difficulties, as his family was not wealthy and he had to rely on scholarships and the generosity of others to pay for his education. Despite these challenges, Kepler persevered and continued to excel academically. He became known for his brilliance in mathematics and astronomy, and his professors recognized his potential as a scholar. In 1591, at the age of 20, he completed his studies at Tübingen and was awarded a master's degree in theology. Kepler's time at the University of Tübingen was a formative period in his life, and it played a crucial role in shaping his future career as a scientist. The rigorous academic environment at Tübingen helped to cultivate his intellectual curiosity and his passion for learning. It also exposed him to a wide range of ideas and perspective, which would inform in scientific work for years to come. Johannes Kepler's time at the University of Tübingen was a critical period in his life, one that laid the foundation for his future successes as a scientist and mathematician. Despite the challenges he faced, Kepler persevered and emerged as a brilliant scholar thanks in large part to the rigorous academic environment and the mentorship of his professors. Kepler's achievements after graduating from college were numerous and had significant impact on the scientific world. Kepler graduated from the University of Tübingen in 1591 at the age of 20 with a degree in theology. However, his true passion laid in mathematics and astronomy. His fascination with the heavens led him to work as an assistant to the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe in Prague. Brahe was impressed with Kepler's skills and assigned him to work on the orbit of Mars, which was a significant challenge at the time. Johannes Kepler and Tycho Brahe had a complex relationship that evolved over time. Tycho made extensive observations of the heavens, gathered data that would prove crucial to Kepler's work. Kepler was initially a student of Tycho's and was hired by him as an assistant. During their time together, Kepler and Tycho worked on improving the accuracy of astronomical observations, particularly the motion of the planets. Tycho believed that the planets moved in circular orbits around the sun, while Kepler believed in elliptical orbits. Despite this difference in opinion, they continued to work together for a time. However, tensions between the two men grew and Kepler eventually left Tycho's employ to pursue his own research. Kepler worked with Brahe for one year before leaving. After Tycho's death, Kepler inherited Brahe's highly valuable astronomical data, which provided the foundation for Kepler's later work on planetary motion. Despite their differences, Kepler always acknowledged the vital role that Tycho had played in his own work, and he dedicated his book, Astronoma Nova, to Tycho's memory. Kepler also wrote a biography of Tycho, praising his skills as an observer and his contributions to astronomy. 
Johannes Kepler and Tycho Brahe had a complex relationship that was based on their shared interest in astronomy, but was marked by a difference in opinion and tensions that eventually led to Kepler's departure from Tycho's employee. Nevertheless, Kepler recognized the importance of Tycho's work and its role in his research. Kepler's first accomplishment was his refinement of the Copernican model of the solar system. Copernicus had proposed that the Sun, not the Earth, was the center of the solar system, but his model was still based on the idea that the planets moved in circular orbits. Kepler realized that this was incorrect and proposed that the planets moved in elliptical orbits around the Sun. This discovery revolutionized our understanding of the solar system and helped pave the way for later discoveries in astronomy. Kepler's second major accomplishment was his discovery of the three laws of planetary motion. His first law stated that the orbits of the planets are elliptical with the Sun at one of the foci. His second law, the law of equal areas, showed that the line drawn from the Sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal periods of time. Finally, Kepler's third law established a mathematical relationship between the orbital periods of the planets and its distance from the Sun. These laws provided a significant breakthrough in our understanding of planetary motion and laid the foundation for Isaac Newton's later work on the laws of motion. Kepler also made significant contributions to the field of optics. He wrote a book called Dioptris, which described the behavior of light passing through lenses and discussed the principles of the telescope. His work on optics was crucial to the development of the telescope, which was later used by Galileo to observe the moons of Jupiter. In addition to his scientific achievements, Kepler was also a prolific writer. He wrote several books which discussed his theories on the structure of the solar system. He also wrote a book on astrology. It translates meaning concerning the more certain fundamentals of astrology, which one of the first books to criticize the practice of astrology. Kepler was a critic of astrology, which was a popular belief system during his time. Kepler disagreed with astrology on several grounds. First, he believed that the movements of the planets and stars had no direct influence on human affairs. He argued that the planets were physical bodies that obeyed the laws of physics and had no conscious will or intention. Therefore, he did not see how their movements could affect human behavior or events. Second, Kepler was critical of the methods used by astrologers to make predictions. He believed that astrology was based on a flawed assumptions and unreliable observations. For example, astrologers often relied on the positions of the planets at the time of a person's birth to make predictions about their future. Kepler argued, that the positions of the planet at birth were arbitrary and had no real significance. Finally, Kepler believed that astrology was a form of superstition that distracted people from the true understanding of the natural world. He saw it as a kind of pseudoscience that relied on vague and mystical explanations rather than rigorous scientific inquiry. Overall, Kepler's rejection of astrology was based on his commitment to scientific reasoning and his belief that the natural world could be understood through empirical observation and mathematical analysis. Johannes Kepler's accomplishments were numerous and varied. His contributions to astronomy and optics were groundbreaking and laid the foundation for many of later discoveries. His work on the laws of planetary motion and his refinement of the Copernican model of the solar system are particularly noteworthy. Kepler was a true Renaissance man, combining his knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and optics 
with his literary talents to become one of the most important figures of the scientific revolution. Kepler's later years in life were marked by personal tragedy. His wife Barbara died in 1611 when Kepler was 40 years old, leaving him to care for their children alone. Kepler had six children, but only three survived to adulthood. Kepler's mother was accused of witchcraft in 1615 and imprisoned for six years. Johannes Kepler was 44 years old at the time. This experience may have influenced his interest in the supernatural and his desire to find mathematical explanations for the universe's workings. The accusation happened in the German town of Leonberg. It is believed that she was accused because of her eccentric behavior and herbal remedies, which were seen as suspicious by some people in the town. At that time, witch hunters and trials were common in Europe and many women were accused of witchcraft based on flimsy evidence or superstitions. In the case of Katerina Kepler, she was accused by a neighbor who claimed to have seen her flying on a broomstick. However, there was no evidence to support this claim. Katerina Kepler was eventually cleared of the charges with the help of Johannes, but she spent six years in prison before her release. Kepler also suffered from poor health, including problems with his eyesight, which made it difficult him to, to continue his work. Nevertheless, he continued to publish books on a wide range of subjects, including astronomy, mathematics, and theology. In 1627, at the age of 56, Kepler published his final work, a book on the interpretation of the biblical passages that he believed had astronomical significance. This was in addition to his other scientific achievements. Johannes Kepler's life after he left Tycho Brahe was marked by incredible achievements in the field of astronomy. His laws of planetary motion were groundbreaking and revolutionized the way that scientists thought about the solar system. Kepler's work laid the foundation for the work of Galileo, Newton, and other scientists who followed him. Although he faced personal tragedies and struggled with poor health, Kepler continued to make important contributions to science until his death. His legacy as one of the greatest astronomers of all time is secure. Johannes Kepler died on November 15, 1630. He was 58 years old at the time of his death. Kepler died at Regensburg, which is located in present-day Germany. At the time of his death, he was serving as the court astronomer to the Holy Roman Emperor. Kepler moved to Regensburg in 1628 and lived there until his death. The cause of Kepler's death is not entirely clear. Some sources suggest he may have died from a fever, possibly pneumonia. Others suggest he may have suffered from a kidney stone or some other kind of illness. Whatever the cause, Kepler's contributions to astronomy and mathematics continue to be celebrated today. Kepler's remains were lost for several centuries before being rediscovered in the 19th century and finally reburied in 2008 not very long ago, 437 years after his death. He was buried at an honored location in the courtyard of St. Peter's Cathedral, located in Regensburg, a city in the state of Bavaria, Germany. It is situated in the old town area of the city near the banks of the Danube River. The cathedral is one of the most important landmarks in Regensburg and is known for its impressive Gothic architecture, ornate interior, and historical significance. R.I.P. Johannes Kepler